Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all gen and his faithfulness to all generations. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome one and all to our service today, Sabbath the 20th of March. Um, for those who are watching on Zoom, uh, welcome to our regular members and our regular visitors and friends. And for those who are watching on YouTube, I would like to welcome you and thank you for joining us uh, this Sabbath day. Uh, we will begin our service with the use of hymn number 152, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Hymn, hymn number 152, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Sabbath. Our scripture reading was Peter's chosen Romans chapter 
chapter 3, verse 23. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. 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 We are just about to head into uh, the portion of the service where we will approach the Lord in prayer. I am on my knees. I know that we're all at home, so I'm sure that many we're in a comfortable place. So those of you who are able to, I would invite you, where possible, to also join me um, on your knees before the Lord. But just adopt a position that is is reverent for you. And um, I recognize that oftentimes when we're in the presence of each other in the building, sometimes we have a, a special need for prayer, a special need for prayer. And we might register our special need maybe by pressing forward to the altar, which is not possible here. But those of you who might feel that particularly pressing need of intervention from the Lord, just gesture to the Lord with a show of your hands, a show of your hands, just to say, Lord, I need you extra specially today. God sees the hands. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, Humbly, humbly we bow before you. We we bow, Lord, to, to worship you, to praise you, to glory in the name of our our Creator, the God who spoke words and brought life forms and worlds and planets and even ourselves, Lord, into being. Father, we we worship you because you you loved us before we even knew who you were. Before we knew who you were, Lord, you were putting in place a plan whereby we would not have to bear the brunt of our sinful deeds, but that you, Lord, have made a way that you would take the punishment on yourself and that in return you would give us your glorious eternal life. Father, thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for speaking into our hearts and to give us a, a knowledge of you, helping us to respond to your the call of your Holy Spirit, and for allowing us to be here on the Sabbath day to worship you. Father, what what we have in our lives is worthless and nothing if it's not for you. And Lord, we are grateful that we can be here in the presence of the brethren to give glory and honour to you this Sabbath day. Lord, you've seen us through another week. You've provided for our needs. You've kept us. You've sustained us. You've fed us. And we just want to say thank you. Lord, as we come and as we've studied this week and as we've read and discussed this morning, Father, we recognize that the sin, it's sin, Lord. It's our transgression from your will for our life, which has put the, the gap in the relationship between you and us. And so, Father, we just come and we hold our hands up and we pray, Lord, please forgive us. Please forgive us. If we knew what we were doing, Lord, we would not sin against you. Help us to have spiritual eyesight, Lord, that we would not only be cleansed, but that we would have the power to live righteously before you. That you would put your spirit in our heart, Lord, and that we would do things of righteousness and purity because it springs from our heart, not because it's a burden and a chore. May we serve you, may we obey you, may we submit all to you, Lord, in love. Father, thank you for blessing us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving us the means by which we might render obedience to you, Lord. Father, take our hearts because we cannot even give it to you. But we give you permission today, Lord, to enter into our lives, into the, the dark recesses of our lives, of our hearts, and do what is necessary, Lord, so that we one day can see you, commune with you face to face, with, which is our ultimate hope and dream. Father, we even at this time want to thank you for the trials and the tribulations that you allow to come our way. Because it's through the trials, dear Lord, that you keep us on our knees that you keep us humble, that you can speak to us in ways that at other times, Lord, we just cannot and will not hear. Thank you. But Lord, you've seen the hands this morning, this afternoon. You know the needs of your people. Lord, I just pray that each and every person who has expressed and who possesses a need of you, may they be filled, dear Lord. May they realize that in you, in your word, in the name of Jesus, there is healing, there is provision, Lord, there is strength, there is peace, there is comfort, there is joy, there is everything, Lord, all things that the soul truly, truly desires is available abundantly in you. 
And Lord, I just pray that you would supply the needs of your people at this time. And Lord, when you have blessed us, may we not keep the blessings to ourselves, but may we go and tell our colleague at work. May we tell our neighbour. May we tell the person that we sit near on the bus of the God in heaven that we serve. Because we know, Lord, that this God, this Jesus, he is the desire of the nations. He is the desire of every single person on this earth, whether or not they realize it. Lord, may we be a light on a hill which cannot be hid. And Lord, you said that when you are lifted up, you would draw all men unto you. Father, at this time, we would like to present before you the speaker of the hour. Lord, I thank you that you have been with him as he's prepared to speak. And even now, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would infuse his mind with your words, with your message. And Lord, when he speaks, may we hear, may we perceive that it is your Holy Spirit speaking directly to our hearts and to our needs. And Lord, may we go forward from here challenged and changed as a result of what we've experienced through your Holy Spirit. And may Lord, your speaker, may he himself, may he be converted and reconverted anew as we also, Lord, are reconverted. Father, we're living in troublous times, troublous times that you told us would come. We see the, the movements of the nations, and Lord, we believe that your coming is near even at the door. But Father, when you come, will you find faith on the earth? Lord, we as your people, we are, are chosen that we would commit and perform a task that you've given to us. Father, help us. We are weak, but you are strong. Lord. We, are, we cannot see past the end of our nose, but you have perfect vision, Lord, into eternity. Help us to, to know how to minister to the needs of the people around us. Lord, may you take hold of your church. And may you use us, Lord, as your vehicle to spread your word near and far, and may your coming be soon, Lord. We look to be saved in your kingdom. We look for the day when pain and suffering and tears and death and disease will be no more. But we know, Lord, before that comes, we have a job to do. Help us, Lord. Help us to do the work. Help us to do the work. Help us to usher in the beginning of your kingdom. May that be soon, Lord. Until that day, we pray that you would keep us faithful, Lord. Keep us faithful. Help us not to stumble. Help us not to become so discouraged that we cannot get back up. Lord, help us to keep getting back up. And Lord, we look forward to the day where we can see you face to face, where we can take communion, Lord, with you drinking of the vine fresh in the heavenly kingdom. Lord, this is a, a wonderful, wonderful dream and a hope of ours. We look forward to its realization. Until that day, keep us faithful with Lord. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus, let the church say, Amen and Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath Church. Today is a very special day. Um, we have communion. But before that, um, we cannot forget the children. Of course, the children um, are a very important part of our worship experience as well. And so today we have a not a story, but a lesson for them. So I invite the children to listen attentively. The lesson about Jesus Christ and who he is, his greatness and his humility, um, being consistent with the theme of our Sabbath worship today, communion. So I invite you children to listen attentively. After the children's story would be the special item uh, by <clears throat> Brother Vickers. And then I go straight into the short homily. Endured for us 
points to the shame, the blame, the guilt. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come, move us to Is the Lamb who was slain for us, so we the church may enter in. So bittersweet when we think of you, the one who bore our curse, our sin. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come, move our hearts to remember. To greet you, brothers and sisters, a very happy Sabbath. Today's Sabbath is very special because of the fact that today we are celebrating the Holy Communion service. This is another service closer to the coming of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Here in the UK, there have been more than 4 million cases of the COVID-19 virus. There have been more than 120,000 deaths related to the virus and almost 3 million have recovered. The active cases have been reduced to 1.3 million. We are still in a lockdown. The Prime Minister has announced the roadmap, if all being well in June, all legal limit on social contact can be removed. This of course will be dependent on the scientific data that the government will rely. We can only hope and pray. Only God knows exactly the future. But what I would like to discuss with you today is not the COVID-19 virus. I want to discuss with you today a different kind of virus. There is an even deadlier condition than the virus that we experience around. This fatal condition is called self or pride. It is the greatest burden that we have to bear in this life. It is the virus of the soul. This spiritual virus will cost us our lives both now and the hereafter. You see, over the years, its victims have included the great leaders, statesmen, kings, priests, prophets, apostles, and even angels. Today, this fatal virus has infected millions of well-meaning Christians. Because pride was the first sin that ever entered into the universe, and it is the last to be rooted out. Pride is stubborn because it has never been the nature of pride to acknowledge that it has a problem. Pride has too high an opinion of self. It thinks that its wrong views have legitimate grounds. Now, the dictionary has defined pride as unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority in talents, in beauty, in wealth, accomplishments, rank or elevation, in office, 
which manifests itself in lofty air, distance, reserve, and often in contempt of others. Now, typically the person infected with pride boasts about who he is, what he has and is able to do, and the position that he holds. But it should be pointed out that one doesn't need to be beautiful, handsome, talented, intelligent, powerful, or rich in order to be proud. Because over the years, this virus of the soul has also infected some of the most ignorant, the oppressed, and even the poorest people. I'll give you the illustration. The college that I graduated from is called Mountain View College in the Philippines when I was doing my BA. The name itself, which is Mountain View, speaks obviously that it is a college in the mountain. Not only that, it is a college in a mountain surrounded by other mountains too. Now, I believe it is the only college in the world that has a unique evangelism program, outreach program, participated in by the students themselves. Now, let me share with you just one. One of the ministries in the campus, amongst many that students participate in, it's called Sulad's Ministry, one of a group of natives in the island of Mindanao, and they happen to be, to be living within the surrounding mountains of Mountain View College. Now, the students from the campus were able to establish mission schools for the most ignorant, poorest, savage people. And these mission schools, founded by the students of Mountain View College, have been recognized by the Philippine government because of the remarkable outcome of its work. They bring literacy programs, sanitation, teach the people there in the mountains to use home remedies, proper use of water, and many other things. Now, at the very start of the pioneering work, this is how the students began. Remember that we are talking here of pride, not from superiority, wealth, beauty, and many others, but from the opposite. You see, students walked the whole day in order to reach the village. Upon arriving, they are welcomed by some savage natives. You would wish you were not welcomed at all, because they were welcomed by a unique chicken recipe. The chicken was killed. It was not cleaned. And then they put the whole of it in a pot with its feathers on and boil it for some minutes to cook, add some salt on it, and that's it. It's serving time. Now, what would you do? Will you eat it? Can you eat it? Well, unfortunately, you don't have any option. It's EOD. It's eat or die. You see, Giving you the chicken welcome is the kindest gesture they can offer. Now, if you are going to refuse, this will be a terrible insult. And no matter who you are, you can die with their poisonous arrows once you have touched their pride. This was in the pioneering days. What I'm saying is, it is not only the beautiful, the talented, the intelligent, the powerful, or the rich that are affected with the pride virus. The virus of the soul has also infected the ignorant, the oppressed, the poorest of people. This pride virus that came from Lucifer has infected all people, all classes, all ethnicity, all over the world. Romans 3.23 clearly says to us, For all have sinned and come short to the glory of God. But the good news is, there is a solution to the virus of the soul. The solution can be obtained from Christ Jesus. The perfect antidote to the sin virus is the meekness and the humility of Jesus. Pride cannot be overcome with pride. Pride can only be overcome by the perfect humility of our Lord Christ Jesus. And because pride has touched every single one of us, including the speaker, Everyone who needs to be saved must be touched by Christ Jesus. The washing of feet symbolizes the humility of Christ. You see, He changed the normal order of how the world perceives the status of society. The Master is washing the servants' feet. Initially, Peter did not want any of this. His reaction not to be washed by Jesus is indicative of the way we understand status and the actions that are or are not done 
are determined based on one's social standing. You see, outside of a Christian worldview, there is no sense that people are inherently equal. It would have seemed obvious to most people of the first century that the powerful, wealthy, or royal were just better than the weak, the poor, and the subjugated. The ancient concept of leadership was that of the superior person delegating lesser tasks to lesser people. That's why Peter was so scandalized when Jesus acted as a servant and washed his feet. What Jesus did by washing the disciples' feet was not meant to suggest they were equal. On the contrary, Jesus clearly states that He is the Lord of them. His action completely overturned the idea of what godly leadership looks like, the concept of servanthood, changing it from something degrading and shameful into a mutual expression of love and respect. And so He said in John 13 verse 14, if I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Our hands, our feet, our will, our hearts need to be consecrated to the Master. And this calls for a surrender of our entire lives to Him. This is the only way we will be able to emulate the humble servant Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for Jesus. He incarnated, he lived among us. He showed us how to live. He showed his power. He showed that he is the way, the truth, and the life. But also he demonstrated his humility and his unfathomable sacrifice for us all. Our prayer is that we become more and more like him, that we will be transformed from within to become like our Savior. We humbly ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. The reason why we do this is because Jesus instituted this the night before he was betrayed. It is called the Last Supper because this was the last Passover meal he had with his disciples before going back to heaven. And we are commanded to do this in remembrance of him. Now, Jesus, as a Jew, 
join every Passover celebration of the Jews from he was young up to his three and a half years of his ministry. And this was to remind them of their deliverance from the bondage of Egypt. And the normal preparations would have included everything such as unleavened bread, spices, bitter herbs, fruits, and a lamb. And there was a lot of preparation that went into the observance of the Passover. Then they would have needed four cups. And these four cups are what is found in Exodus chapter 6, 6 to 7. And therefore say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. First, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Second, I will rescue you from their bondage. Third, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. Four, I will take you as my people and I will be your God. Those are the four cups of freedom. That is the typical Passover celebration for the Jews. And in the very last supper of Jesus with his disciples, prior to his death, he changed everything. He skipped those three and only took one cup. Not only did Jesus skip the herbs, the fruit, but he didn't talk about the lamb either. Why would he skip the most important part of the Passover meal? Well, Jesus was trying to show the disciples that he was the lamb. They didn't have to kill a lamb ever again for the purpose of this celebration because Jesus is God's great exchange. He is God's once and forever substitute. In just a few hours, he would walk to the cross, the spotless lamb, the promised one who would shed his blood and give his life for you and for me. I invite you to sing with me, Jesus keep me near the cross, as the deaconesses uncover the table.
The reading for the broken of the bread is taken from Luke chapter 22, verse 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and brake it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's bow our heads. Loving kind Father in heaven, thank you so much for what you did for us in Calvary. Thank you for seeing us and knowing what our needs are. And we ask that as we partake of this bread which represents your body, that each one of us will be able to understand and be drawn to you. We pray that you will help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as half as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Loving Father, thank you for this opportunity you've given to us one more time, that we can now participate in this part of the service where we are drinking the wine which represents your blood. We ask, Father, that as we drink it, that it will purify us. It will help us to understand what you did for us. And we ask that we too will be drawn closer to you in our daily living. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus, I long to be perfectly 
We are now going to partake this bread as a symbol of Christ's body broken for our redemption, followed by a silent prayer. This is the unfermented wine, the symbol of the blood of Christ Jesus that is poured for the ransom of many, and that includes you and me. Let's drink it, followed by a silent prayer.
At this point, I would like to thank the deacons and the deaconesses who have provided for us the emblems, the materials, the preparation of the church for a COVID-19 safe operation of our virtual communion. Thank you so much for the hard work that you do. I also would like to thank the elders who supported me in making all these happen. We thank as well the communications team for their role since the lockdown up to now, at least. They bring us together even in a limited manner such as this. I want to thank you all, the faithful members. You are the reason why we gather and we want to point and direct each other to the most important person in the church, and that is Christ Jesus. He is the one and only source of hope and salvation. God bless you. have our benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. <music>